Alright, let's go ahead and do a little bit more work on the beard to get it finished up. So, one thing we can take a look at is actually working with painting our density. Now, we were able to get rid of some of the hairs we didn't want right here within these guide hairs by playing with the length tool, but that didn't truly get rid of them. If we actually want to not have hair in certain areas, we can actually do that in the primitives tab. And it's going to have very little to do with these groom hairs. What it's going to do is actually choose where or where we won't have these actual primitive hairs. So to do this, we need to be up here towards the top and work with this mask. Right now, the mask is actually based on the density, and we don't really need that. I'm going to go over here and choose Create Map. Now, once I do that, I need to set a resolution, and I want this to be a bit higher than 5. I'm going to go to about 15. Otherwise, I might get some little jagged areas, and we'll call this the Beard Mask. Go ahead and hit Create. There we go. Now, I'm not going to be able to paint this right now, at least not with any confidence, because I can't actually see where I'm painting. I need to go ahead and bring up my outliner. I'm going to hide this head model and bring up the actual beard geometry right there. And I'll hit the paint tool right over here. Double click it. We'll go ahead and bring that up. Let me go ahead and shrink it down just a little bit right there. And if this is still this green color, you can try hitting this little brush icon again, and that should update it for you. Okay, so now we can go ahead and paint exactly where we want our hair. Wherever there's white, we will have hair. Wherever there's black, we won't. So what I can go ahead and do is, for example, paint away at the edges here so maybe it doesn't accidentally use those areas. So one thing you need to be aware of is there is a little bit of an issue when using these soft brushes and the black color. If I go ahead and let's say paint right over here, and by the way, I do have symmetry turned on here. You can do that by just scrolling down over here to stroke and turn on reflection right there. But notice when I paint that, if I really zoom in very close, and this may not show up great on the recording software, but you might see that there's some stair stepping there. There's a really black stroke right there, and then it's kind of a dark gray, darker gray, and it kind of fades off. Wherever I have some of these other shades of gray, not pure black, I still will get hair. So you have to be aware of that. So you want to use this hard-edged brush to completely eliminate hair from an area. Right now, though, I'm actually not interested in getting rid of hair right there, so I'm going to bring that back. What I was going to do is probably use this dark color here to go ahead and just run along the edges here. Oops, looks like I had a little bit of an error there. That's because I accidentally painted through to the other side, so I'll just kind of be careful with that. There we go. Just going to get in quite a few errors in there when I'm painting on those sides, but that's okay, because I will just go ahead and choose the white color now, and we'll go ahead and be careful not to paint through to that other side. There we go. You may not have that issue as much as I do with it kind of painting where you don't want it to. I believe it depends on your video card. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do the same here. And whoops, right up to there. And we'll go back to the white color now. I'll go ahead and fix that issue right there. So we want to add a little bit more black right over there perhaps. Okay, and now I can go ahead and use a softer brush. I'll go ahead and switch here, maybe even to this one, and just kind of feather those edges a little bit. I don't mind if it touches that edge a little bit, but that way I'll make sure I don't get any like very hard line wherever I have that paint. Okay, and maybe to kind of further showcase what we can actually do with this, we'll remove some hair from an area. Oops, looks like I have a little bit of an error right there. I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the black paint. Oops, let me actually go with hard edge. There we go. And then we'll go back to the white paint, and we'll choose a softer edge brush. And we'll just feather that back in. Okay. And, for example, what I can do is come over here. I'm going to choose this hard edge brush. I'm going to choose black. And maybe we want no hair kind of right there. I'll probably push out a little bit further, and then I'll use the soft brush to kind of feather that back in. 
Actually, that's a little bit too much. I'm going to go back here and we'll kind of reestablish that a bit right there. Might come even a little bit further out. There we go. And now I'll choose a very soft brush right there. And we'll just kind of come along the edges right there. There we go. All right now to save this paint, I need to make sure I come over here and hit this little diskette icon. We'll save that. That'll save the paint. I can exit out of this tool now. And you can see that's updated. I have a couple little issues right there I'll have to go in and address. But you can see for the most part, it's been taken care of. So to go back in there, I'll click this brush icon. You can see the issue is right there. I'll bring this back. We'll choose that black color and we'll just make sure we get rid of that there. We'll save again. Exit back out. And now I can go ahead and hide this geometry. We'll go ahead and select, where is it, my beard geometry. We'll hide that. And we'll go ahead and bring back the head model. And there we go. Now I'm having a little error right now. See when I click and drag, it's still bringing out this brush icon. That's an error I tend to get quite a bit after I'm finishing painting. I find that you just need to save your file and quickly reopen it and all should be well. I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. All right, there we go. That's been corrected. So what I want to take a quick look at is the shader over here because I don't like how shiny this is. I also don't like the color. I want it to be a much darker looking stubble. So to get access to the shader, I'm going to go over here to Windows, Rendering Editors, and select my Hypershade. Go ahead and bring that up. And then I'm just going to double click here on the Hair Physical Shader, and I'll close this back off, and I'll have access to it right here. So for starters, I'm going to darken my root color quite a bit, as well as my tip color to make that a bit darker. You will still see quite a bit of this brown in there, and that's because we actually have two separate highlights and a glint color, and you can see one of those highlights and glint colors has that kind of orangish, reddish color in there. I'm going to go ahead and remove some of that, bring that down, do the same with the glint color there. I don't mind a little bit of glint, and it could have a little bit of that color. It's just a little too, too much for me right now. There we go. And we'll go ahead and bring down this first highlight here. The highlights pretty much just stack one on top of the other, so you can have a broader highlight. I'll go ahead and bring the scatter down to make that a little bit sharper. You can do the same on this one here. Don't want to bring it out too much and make the beard appear completely black. We'll bring some of these colors back up a little bit. But there we go. I like that look better. All right. Now, we're not going to go too far into this shader. We're actually going to cover this hair shader a lot more in the... I believe two modules from now when we actually do our final renders, but most of this is fairly explanatory. We have transparency, ambient color, some incandescence, two separate highlights where we can of course control the color in each highlight, the weight or the strength of each highlight, the shift as it kind of goes along the length of the hair, and the scatter which is kind of how tight or broad the highlight is. And that's true of also the secondary highlight here. And again, the glint color works fairly similarly. We have a weight to the glint, a shift on the glint, and the overall scatter on the glint. Transmission we won't see in the viewport, but this is similar to the other transmission we saw in our previous module. This is how the light can penetrate through the hairs, and we'll see that in a render. All right, so to go ahead and finish this off, I don't want this kind of uh, complete baldness right over here. So I'm going to go back to my... Xgen over here. I'll go back to painting. I'll go ahead and bring back my beard geometry. I'll go ahead and hide my head model. Go ahead and click to paint right there. And I'll just go ahead and bring this back in. Double click for my paint tool over here. Kind of bring that back in. There we go. Choose white. And I'm just going to add all of that back in. But you can see that's how we can very easily go in and add or remove hair from anywhere we don't want. So for example, if I had an issue still with hair on the lips and stuff, it's very easy to go in and remove it that way. So I'll hit save here. I'll exit back out of this. We'll go ahead and hide this piece of geometry, bring back our head model, and there we go.